so length of the top surface fiber will decrease due to the contraction and length of the bottom surface fiber will increase due to the expansion right so this beam will bend like this Sometimes two or more concepts are combined in one question. For example, there is one concept regarding buckling of the column and there is another concept about thermal stress. So we can combine both. So in gate 2014, they have asked one question in which they are asking to find out rise in temperature required to buckle the column. Right? In a similar way, we can combine bending with thermal effect. Right? In bending chapter, we found deflection due to applied load and moment here we have to find out the relationship between the bending and thermal effect right so let's say we have beam like this and it's it's kept at uniform temperature t right now let's say the top surface temperature is decreased from t to t1 and bottom surface temperature is increased from t to t2 right so length of the top surface fiber will decrease due to the contraction and length of the bottom surface fiber will increase due to the expansion right so this beam will bend like this right so let's see let's say we have beam which is simply supported right so let's say this is length l height of the beam is h let's take one small element of length dx right initially it's kept at uniform temperature t t correct so nothing was happening now let's say its temperature got changed here t1 here t2 so obviously t2 is more than t1 right so what will happen in that case this will bend and this is bend position right so this element dx will be like this now right so this is the length of bottom fiber and this is the length of top fiber correct now let's see here what will be the change in length of top fiber due to this thermal effect change in length delta l for top fiber will be equal to alpha coefficient of thermal expansion into temperature difference final temperature t1 initial temperature t so t1 minus t into length of element dx this will be the change in length right what will be the final length of top fiber initial length that is dx plus change in length delta lt so that will be equal to dx plus alpha t1 minus t into dx right similarly change in length for bottom fiber will be equal to alpha temperature difference final temperature is t2 minus initial temperature t into length dx final length of bottom fiber initial length dx plus change in length alpha t2 minus t into dx right what will be the difference of length between top and bottom fiber difference this
minus this thing dx minus alpha t1 minus t dx correct so this will get cancelled out this term also we will have lb minus lt is equal to alpha t2 minus t1 into dx now let's say this temperature difference t2 minus t1 between the bottom and top fiber is delta t right so we can write alpha delta t into dx correct now let's see here let's extend this so this angle is let's say d theta right and this length is let's say k what about this length it is h height of the beam right so from here what will be the lt length of top fiber k into d theta k into d theta what will be the length of bottom fiber k plus h into d theta what will be the difference k plus h d theta minus k d theta that is equal to h d theta right so we can substitute this here so let's substitute that is h d theta is equal to alpha delta t dx so from here d theta by dx will be equal to alpha delta t by h right now in beam bending chapter we studied this situation d square y by dx square is equal to d theta by dx is equal to m by ei right so this d theta by dx we can replace that is equal to d square y by dx square is equal to alpha delta t by h right because theta is equal to dy by dx if i substitute in place of theta dy by dx it will become d square y by dx square right so finally we got the equation now we can integrate it two times right so let's integrate integrating with respect to dx dy by dx is equal to alpha delta d x by h plus constant of integration c1 integrating one more time y is equal to alpha delta t x square by 2h plus c1x plus another constant c2 right now we have to find out these constant c1 and c2 two constant means two boundary conditions are required correct so what are the boundary condition then so the boundary condition is at uh, at x is equal to 0 y is 0 there is no deflection because it is supported here similarly at x is equal to l y is again 0 it is supported 
here also, right? So let's substitute at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to, this will be 0 plus 0 plus C2. So C2 is 0 now. So we have y is equal to alpha delta t x square by 2h plus C1x because C2 is 0. One more boundary condition at x is equal to L, y is again 0. So y is 0 is equal to alpha delta t x is equal to L. So L square by 2h plus C1 L. So this will be C1 L is equal to minus alpha delta t L square by 2h. This will get cancelled out. So we will get C1 is equal to minus alpha delta t L by 2h. Correct? So what will be the final equation? y is equal to alpha delta t x square by 2h plus c1 that is minus alpha delta t l by 2h minus alpha delta t l by 2h into x. So this is our final equation. So by using this equation we can find out deflection y at any point by just putting the value of x. right? Now let's say we are interested in finding out the deflection value at midpoint at x is equal L by right so let's put at x is equal to l by 2 y is equal to alpha delta t l square by 8 h minus alpha delta t l square by 4 h. So finally we got y is equal to alpha delta t l square by 8 h minus. So this we can remember for gate exam that at midpoint deflection value will be equal to this at L by 2. Right? And if we want to find out deflection value at any other point, we can just substitute the value of x in this equation and we can find out value of y at any point along the beam. Right? So this is the relationship between deflection and this thermal effect.